Hi. This is Dr. Parham Valgozu. I am a sleep disorder specialist and neuropharmacologist based in Northern California. I'm also the medical director for healthy sleep care. Today, we will go into the part two of our discussions about dreams, how they are generated, what's the function of the dream, what is the consensus about dream, and what it means to you. Believe it or not, the scientists decided a few years ago that they are going to agree that they are not going to have a definition for the dream. A lot of people get involved. On one hand, philosopher and clergyman, on the other hand, physicians or psychologists, scientists from all sorts of walks of life, neurocognitive, behavioralist, and they each have a different opinion and a different viewpoint about the dream. So after lots of discussions, I think it was the American Academy of Sleep Medicine who decided that there will be no consensus about the definition of the dream. However, later on, we decided that we can have a definition for sleep meditation, which is anything that comes to our mind when we are asleep and we can remember it. So it can be very wide. I remember when I used to ski in the night, right before my sleep get deep, I was doing all of my different maneuvers in the sleep and even I could feel it in my muscle. And I am sure I was shallowly asleep and it was not a pre-asleep practice. Or it can be very, very deep and dense late in the night, intense with emotions and meaning and archetypes and all sorts of things that you as a viewer most likely have experienced in your life. There was a question if the dream is just a rehearsal of what happens in the day and the research says no. It does have some elements of your daytime events and some elements of your uh, older memory and some elements of your emotional attachments and all get together and a narrative and a scenario is built. It is consensus of most of the scientists and physicians that dreaming, especially when we are talking about REM dreaming, is a conscious process. So there is narrative and there are people in it, or characters, I should say, other than you, and something happens. So the REM dreaming is hallucinatory. That means we see something or perceive something that is not true. Uh, a lot of uh, it is um, seeing, but it can be a smelling, touching, hearing, things like that. It's delusional. That means we know it's happening in our mind, but it's not really happening. And also, it can be bizarre. A lot of time it's bizarre. So the association between events are not really logical. Events are a little bit fuzzy. The scene is a little bit fuzzy. So these are what we expect from dreaming. As far as the function of dreaming goes, there is a lot of different uh, theories or thought schools about what it means. Some people think it has absolutely no meaning. Some people think it's extremely very important and it's our inner self trying, talking to us, things like that. Um, obviously, when you go to different field and you talk to a psychoanalyst, they might have a different view point than a cognitive neuroscientist or a behavioral neuroscientist. 
is oracleology or a psychologist or a um, uh, medication expert. Um, however, the current thinking, the more dominant current thinking, is that the dream has something to do with processing of memory and processing of emotions when we are asleep. And it is not just the byproduct of this processing that happens. And as Dr. Matt Walker was saying, um, it's not like the light bulb produces heat. The dream has its own function. We know there is psychological benefit for dreaming. And we also know that there is uh, neurocognitive benefit through dreaming. There is a lot of studies, specifically in humans, imaging the studies, uh, fMRIs, um, high, defini high definition EEGs, or uh, even the lesion studies in patients that show us these functions clearly. We also know that the function of dream and function of Consciousness are parallel to each other because in dream we are conscious. And it's postulated that both serve the same functions in different realms. Consciousness experts um, really think that we generate ideas inside our mind, inside our consciousness and test them with our feelings about that scenario. So that scenario is bad, it's gonna have bad outcome. We don't do that outside in outside life. If the scenario make us feel good, make us feel achieved, maybe it's a good idea, and then maybe we try it in outside life. For dream, they also think of something like that Obviously, more research needed to be done, but a lot of research has been done and a lot of data is there that I can open it up in another session. Um, another fact that we know about dreaming is that when this emotion and memory processing happens, the actual emotion and memory that was processed is altered through dreaming. And there is a theory and there is some supporting evidence for that, that when we deal with the emotion in a calm setting of a sleep, that is having less norepinephrine, adrenaline hanging around, we can um, develop memories that are not so intense emotionally for us and is more tolerable. If you remember from previous videos or previous knowledge, when we sleep, we have two different states, state of non-REM sleep and a state of REM sleep. And fundamentally, these are two different state of being. If I felt that um, we have three state of being, wake, non-REM, and REM, and they are fundamentally different. So it's not wake and sleep. In REM sleep, the brain act very similar as if it was conscious, but with lack of connection to movement in the body and also the norepinephrine circuits of brain are all turned off. We know all of our complex dreams that need a lot of memory, Recall and activation happens in REM sleep. And during this REM sleep, our dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex is deactivated and we have seen there is less blood flow. So this is the executive portion of our brain. So at the same time, the activity of emotion processing units like amygdala and anterior cingulate gyrus or visual sensory cortex like occipital 
increases. This gives us a condition that we can deal with a lot of emotions and with a lot of memory. However, there is no, not much logic input in it. And so it becomes bizarre, it becomes intensely emotional, as you remember from some of your dreams. In non rem sleep, hypocampal activity is increased. That is also a unit that deals with um, processing and consolidation of the memory. And the signal transition or transaction between the hippocampus and neocortex increases that are also places that deal with memory consolidation. So this offline memory consolidation helps with um, simple sensory motor skills. For example, it is a very famous story that a pianist told uh, one of the sleep scientists that when he has difficulty with a very complex performance and cannot get it, when he goes to sleep in the morning, he does it perfectly. Um, this is one of the functions of the brain, increases the um, um, sensory motor memory processing and abilities. Problem solving, I think everybody knows Benzen Loop came into the mind of the scientist as he was sleeping, or Mendeleev table came to the mind of Mendeleev as he was asleep, and a lot of other things, including probably for your own life. I myself um, get some messages in the um, electronic medical record about some kind of finding that came for a patient. And sometimes, rarely, but it happens, I don't immediately know what I want to do and it's not urgent. I sleep on it. And of course, you have here heard sleeping on it. And in the morning, I'm 100% sure what I want to do on it. There is data and science and research that shows what happened in a sleeping brain that you can solve the problem after you sleep on it. So another um, function is emotion regulation. There is some data that shows when we sleep, we take the intensity of the emotion out of the memory. So it's more tolerable and congruent with um, um, success as a species or as a um, person in the society, in the environment. So this is another evolutionary function that we have seen that happens in the sleep. And a lot of it has to do with emotion processing and memory processing that happens through dreaming. The dreams of the non rem sleep are more um, thought rather than a complex scenario with scenery. Um, in the REM sleep, there are more hippocampal scenarios and we see things and a story happens and event happens and uh, that needs recall of other memories and assimilation of a couple of things and rehearsal of new memory and all this combination happens in complex REM dreaming. In NREM dreaming we have episodic memories that are simple and short and in REM dreaming we have semantic memories that are um, processed. So when we have emotional memories, the more emotion is attached to a scenery, the more it gets enhanced by sleeping and getting printed in the memory for a long-term recall. In activation synthesis theory by Dr. Hobson from around 60s and 70s, um, that kind of replaced the Freud theory. Um, we felt Dreams are half hazard and thus absolutely have no meaning attached to them. And in his um, writings, he was very um, critical of the Freud. Later on, the explosion of neuroscience showed that it's not completely half hazard and it, it, it does have a function. And how detailed things are and how many, so many things are happening 
through the sleep and through dreaming. And um, now we have a new hypothesis that is called Next Up. And um, um, it discusses how dealing with one memory is not enough and brain recalls other memories into the processing and this processing guides the behavior of the organism in future wake environment. Obviously, this is my attempt to summarize the whole theory in one sentence, but um, in the next video, I talk about um, this theory in more detail and also the emotion and uh, uh, memory processing that the, almost the same people and same group put together for us. I believe that involvement of the emotions and the seeking system is very important part of dreaming. And this seeking system uh, that is a dopamine system is very connected to brain stem raw emotions that are evolutionary a lot lower um, and older. And they um, guide the content of the dream. It's a still a theory and has minority um, uh, belief on it, but it's backed by the data, especially both imaging data and uh, data from uh, lesion analysis and behavior. Thank you very much for your um, attention, and um, I see you next week.